Have you ever heard of a pure function? Given the same input, a pure function will always produce the same output. Pure functions have no side effects, and they don't rely on external state. They're predictable, which makes them easy to unit test. The correctness of a pure function is based solely on its return value. In a perfect world, all functions would be pure, and all code would be easy to test. But we don't live in a perfect world, and the correctness of most of the functions we write is based on indirect input and output. This is as true for game development as it is for any other type of programming. So how do we write unit tests for in-peer functions? The answer, test doubles. A test double is an object that can stand in for a real object in a test. Test doubles come in a few different flavors, but they all serve the same purpose. They provide a way to test functions that aren't pure. Let's see them in action by writing a couple of unit tests for some Unity code. We'll be using nsubstitute to create our test doubles. So we'll start off by heading over to nsubstitute.github.io, then clicking download to get the latest version of nsubstitute. Now let's open up Unity and import the DLL. Because of Unity's limited support for .NET, we'll have to input the DLL that supports .NET 3.5. Now, we can create a couple of tests that reference and substitute. We'll use this generic player class as an example. It has two properties, weapon and inventory, and two methods. The first one, damage, returns the player's damage based on a multiplier. The second one, add to inventory, adds an item to the player's inventory. We'll start out by writing a test for the damage method. If you're following along, you can find this code on GitHub, link in the description. For this test, we'll need to create a player and assign it a weapon. Because damage depends on indirect input from weapon, we'll need to make the player's weapon a test double, which we'll do using nsubstitute. Now, we can override weapon.damage and make it return 2. This type of test double is called a stub because it simply provides indirect input. Next, let's finish this test off by asserting that passing 2 into player.damage returns a 4. For this test, we don't need to know any implementation details for weapon. All we care about is that weapon.damage returns a 2. And of course, the test passes. Now, let's create a test for the add to inventory method. Add to inventory doesn't have a return value, but it does produce indirect output that we can verify. Just like before, let's create a player, but this time we'll give it a test double for inventory. And since inventory expects an item, we'll create a test double for that too. Now, all we have to do is call player.addToInventory and assert that inventory received a call to its add method with the item that we created a test double for. The type of test double that we used for inventory is called a mock because it's used to verify indirect output. And once again, the test passes without us ever having to know the details of the other classes that player collaborates with. And that's all there is to it. What I've just demonstrated are some basic techniques for writing tests for impure functions. I've left a link in the description to a slide deck that I highly recommend called Principles of Solitary Unit Testing for some further reading on the subject of test doubles. And if you like this video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe with notifications on.